بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأشهد أن محمدا عبد الله ورسوله صلوات الله وسلامه عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين أما بعد So tonight inshallah we're going to discuss مسائل connected to the times of slaughtering So connected to the best time of slaughtering what to do if you miss the times of slaughtering and connected to things connected to the best time of slaughtering and a few other things inshallah so to start the fuqaha say that the time for udhiya the time for udhiya the date of udhiya is on the 10th of dhul hijjah on the 10th of dhul hijjah and they say the time for udhiya that you're going to slaughter the sunnah one or the or the vow one or even your your slaughtering of hajj but we're not studying that now so we're focusing on the udhiya the time for the udhiya when it's now permissible and to now slaughter the animal, it's after the Eid Salah. So after the Eid Salah is now the time to is now the time to slaughter your your Eid animal. And if you slaughter before the Eid Salah, then Rasulullah said to the person who to the person who slaughtered before the Eid Salah, that he should slaughter another one in place of this one. Because that one there that you slaughtered before the salah doesn't count as an ubhiyah. It doesn't count as an ubhiyah. So connected to that, connected to that, there's a few things. <laughs> Number one is that if there's more than one salah to eid in the place, if there's more than one salah to eid in the place, then the time for slaughtering would begin after the completion of the first of the of the first eid salah amongst the other or amongst all the eid salawat. So if there are three or four or five in the one city, let's say it's a big city, and one of them, the moment the first salah ended of any of the five or any of the three, then after that time you can you can perform the you can start slaughtering. You can start slaughtering. So in saying that, in saying that we said Eid Salah, we said Eid Salah. So that means not the khutbah, because as we discussed before, the khutbah is sunnah to attend. The sunnah is the khutbah is sunnah to attend, and also for the Imam to do it is sunnah. It's sunnah according to most of the ulama, all former dahib, they relied upon position. Is that the Eid khutbah is sunnah? So therefore, that means that if a person started slaughtering during the khutbah, the, the slaughtering would be valid. If he began after the Eid khutbah, then of course the slaughtering would be valid. But the ulama say the ulama say that it's better. It's better to perform the slaughtering after the Eid khutbah as well. After the Eid khutbah as well. So therefore, a person should try and slaughter after the Eid Salah and the Eid Khutbah. So we spoke about if there's more than one Eid Salah in the town, in the town or city. Now what if there's no Eid Salah in that town or city? Either the people are not performing Eid Salah at all. The people are not performing Eid Salah at all for no reason. They just do not want to perform Eid Salah. Or, or they're going to, or they cannot perform Eid Salah because one of the stipulations of Eid Salah are not found. For example, being 40 people, you have to be 40 people according to the Han, Hanbali and Shafi'i Madhab. <coughs> or, oh, well, specifically the Hanbali, this, according to the Hanbali Madhab for Eid Salah. According to the Hanbali Madhab for Eid Salah, you have to be 40 people. And they have other stipulations as well, similar, similar to Jumu'ah. So let's say any of these stipulations are not fulfilled. Any of the stipulations are not fulfilled for Eid Salah, then Eid Salah will not take place in that town or city. So in that case, what to do? In that case, they say, they say that you then estimate the time it would take for the Eid Salah to be performed. You estimate the time it would take for Eid Salah to be performed. After that time, you can then slaughter. After that time, you can then slaughter. And some of the fuqaha like Ibn Qudama says you estimate the time of the Eid Salah plus the khutbah. Plus the khutbah. But the madhab only counts the salah. The madhab only counts the salah. So you estimate. So therefore, the fuqaha speak on how long would you assume? How long would you assume the salah to be or the salah and the khutbah to be? So many of them say, many of them, they don't mention it. And others like Zarkashi, he says that it would be the length of, a, of an Eid salah and Eid khutbah performed at average speed, at average speed. And others like Ibn Qudama says that a khutbah, so uh, Zarkashi mentions, yeah, khutbah and salah. Ibn Qudama mentions, because his opinion is khutbah and salah, he says a complete khutbah and complete salah. So that would mainly refer to the uh, wajib and the fard, or the um, arkan, the pillar aspects of the salah. Even though the sunan aspects, they will add a two or three minute thing. It's not a big deal uh, to, if we were to estimate a complete 
sunnah salah with all the sunnah and all the wajibat and mustahabat etc so therefore and all for the khutbah also the obligatory parts of the khutbah the obligatory parts of the khutbah according to the hamli madhab there's mainly four things four things that are obligatory of the khutbah of, of a khutbah of uh, jumu'ah or a khutbah of eid salah so in saying that in saying that we'd say after the after salatul fajr or after the time of fajr comes in or when we say at sunrise at sunrise from so now from sunrise until the sun rises a bit higher until the sun rises a bit higher then you cannot perform salah so usually from sunrise 10 to 12 to 15 minutes after the sunrise you do not you cannot perform any salah it's the time of prohibit makruha it's a prohibited time of salah it's a prohibited time of salah thereafter so let's call it 12 let's say 15 minutes even thereafter you assume an average amount of salah an average amount of salah let's say it would take five to seven minutes for the salah and the khutbah another four minutes let's say for example so let's call it seven eight minutes so then 14 15 minutes after that 15 minutes you counted after sunrise so 15 minutes from sunrise for the prohibited time and 15 minutes of the assumption the estimated amount of time the salah and the khutbah would take place had they been performed in this town had they been performed in this town or in this area thereafter a person can slaughter so basically plus minus 25 to 30 minutes after the after the s after sunrise after sunrise 30 25 to 30 minutes after sunrise a person can then slaughter a person can then begin slaughtering and if eid salah is being performed in the town but the person could not make it for the eid salah the person could not make it for eid salah or he missed the eid salah or he just didn't perform the eid salah then this person would be the same as the rest that are performing the eid salah in the sense that he do, he has to wait until he has to wait until the first salah is completed in the town until the first salah is completed in the town thereafter he can slaughter if there was no salah performed until zawal if there was no salah performed until zawal thereafter people can slaughter immediately when zawal strikes and no eid salah was performed on the day of eid then people can go out and slaughter immediately but before zawal before Zawal, you're not allowed to slaughter before the Salah. But Al-Khiraqi, from the Hanabila, he says you do not wait for the first Salah to finish. He says you just give an estimation of the Salah and Khutbah. That's what he says. That's what he says. He says because the Salah can be formed at an early time or at a later time. So then it could, you know, if they're performing it mid-morning, which is valid, then you're going to wait a long time before your slaughtering starts. Even though, as you mentioned, that the Sunnah is, the Sunnah for Eid al-Adha is to perform immediately after, immediately once the time of Eid Salah comes in, as you mentioned in the Eid lecture. And th that gives people ample time to begin the slaughtering compared to Eid al-Fitr. Compared to Eid al-Fitr, when you delay a bit, especially when there's other Sunnah to perform on Eid al-Fitr. So... And those are the rules for a person who will not be performing Eid Salah or will be performing Eid Salah, then when, when does he slaughter? And when does he slaughter? The last thing connected to this is that in the Hanbali Madhab, you can perform Salatul Jumu'ah before Zawal. You can perform Salatul Jumu'ah before Zawal. That's one point. But the other point is that if Jumu'ah and Eid fall on the same day, then according to the Hanbali Madhab only, you can perform either of them. You can perform either of them. You don't need to perform both. Um, you can perform either of them and therefore if they decide if the people decide we're not going to perform Eid Salah we're just going to perform Salatul Jumu'ah we're just going to perform Salatul Jumu'ah then what's to be done there they say that if the Salah, Salatul Jumu'ah is performed before Zawal if Salatul Jumu'ah is going to be performed before Zawal then you have to wait until the Salatul Jumu'ah is over and thereafter you can slaughter if it's going to be performed after Zawal after Zawal which is the best time the better time for Salatul Jumu'ah then in this case as we said once Zawal strikes, then you can slaughter. Then you can slaughter immediately. So those are the rules connected to. As a starting point, there's more to mention. That is a starting point connected to the time of slaughtering and and uh, for a person who's performing the salah and a person who's not performing the Eid salah. So now we said the estimation of the time of Eid salah. We said the estimation of the time of Eid salah for those people who are not performing Eid salah. So if a person is in a village or suburb outside a city outside the city and they are not performing Eid Salah then there as long as their area their locality is not connected to the town where Eid Salah is being performed these people can estimate so they do not wait they do not wait for the Eid Salah for the closest Eid Salah to them if they are deemed outside outside of the town outside of the boundaries of the town not connected to the town 
then they use the estimation that we said. They use the estimation that we said. And if they are deemed connected to the town, then essentially they have to perform Eid Salah, or they should, they should perform Eid Salah. They should perform Eid Salah, uh, and then uh, slaughtering can only be valid after the Eid Salah, after the Eid Salah. Now the Maliki Madhab differ in this, we're going to touch on it just now when we mention the Mas'ala of the best time of slaughtering, of the best time of slaughtering. So the Maliki Madhab have a few specific details connected to, connected to the time of the Eid Salah because of the slaughtering of the Iman that they mentioned, but we'll touch on it just now. So then the Fuqaha mentioned that the time for slaughtering, the time for slaughtering continues for how long? They say the day of Eid, so 10th of Dhul Hijjah and two days after, two days after, so for three days. So 11th Dhul Hijjah and 12th Dhul Hijjah, th these two days, that's the opinion of the Hanafi Madhab as well and the Maliki Madhab. The Shafi'i Madhab says it's on the day of Eid and three days after, three days after the day of Eid. So basically the Ayyam Tashriq. In those days, the days of Hajj, Ayyam Tashriq, usually they are gen they are the 10th of Dhul Hijjah, and then three days after. That's why the Takbirat continue, three days after. But for slaughtering, two days according to most of the ulama. Two days according to most of the ulama. And they say that that's because it's been narrated from a number of the Sahaba of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. That they said the slaughtering, the time for slaughtering is two days after the day of Eid. Two days after the day of Eid. And they also mentioned Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told the Sahaba in the early times of when they were performing Udhiyah uh, uh, that he said, do not keep and store the meat for more than two days after Eid. So three days, for more than three days, the day of Eid and two days after. So the people at that time were in extreme poverty. They were in extreme poverty and hunger. They were in extreme poverty and hunger. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam put this in place so that the people can, those who can afford to slaughter and those who will slaughter, they can rush out to fulfill the aspect of feeding. They can rush out to give out the meat to fulfill the aspect of feeding. You're going to mention the virtue of, of the feeding from your udhiyah, a portion of the udhiyah. In fact, that it's wajib to give a portion of your udhiyah in charity. It's, a, it's wajib to give a portion of your udhiyah in charity. So because there's extreme virtue of that and now people were in extreme hunger and poverty, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told them that you can store your meat and eat your meat but up to three days. So the day of Eid and two days after, they have to give it, all, give it away, give it away to the people because people were in extreme hunger and poverty. So this rule later was abrogated. This rule was later abrogated. This rule of what? This rule of storing the meat because the people then were not in extreme poverty and hunger as, as they were in the early times. So this rule was abrogated. So the principle in usul is that is if let's going to mention the principle and then we'll give it with the example this very example that inshallah it will be clear if there's something or there's some rule and connected to it are a few things the fact that one of the things have been abrogated doesn't mean that everything connected to the thing has been abrogated so what does that mean that means here the udhiyah the udhiyah there's two things connected to it the hadith indicates that the you do not keep your meat for more than Three days, or more than three days. So, the, and you have to give it out. So, the fuqaha say that Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam would not have allowed them to slaughter at a time when they cannot eat, when they cannot eat the meat, because you can or should eat from your udhiyah. Fakulu minha. Allah even says, eat from it. So, on day four, that means the third day after Eid, as the Shafi'i Imam says, if you could slaughter on that day, then it doesn't go that you are allowed to slaughter, but you have to give your meat away. So they say the fact that Rasulullah wasallam is indicating this whole aspect of meat and keeping meat and eating the meat being for three days indicates that slaughtering is for three days. And so now that's the aspect of slaughtering and it has how many days connected to it and it has the aspect of storing the food. So these two things. So the fact that storing the food has been abrogated does not necessarily mean that the other thing connected to it, in this case, the day of slaughtering has been abrogated. Because the principle in usul is that if one thing connected to the main thing is abrogated, doesn't mean everything connected to the main thing is abrogated. I hope the principle is clear. clear. So therefore the fuqaha say that yes, that the storing of the meat, that has been abrogated. But the days of slaughtering, that has not yet, that has not been abrogated. So that would be the rule of that, of how many days, or it's one of the evidences, of how many days to keep the meat is it taken from these two things. It's taken from these two things amongst others. So now in saying that the slaughtering continues, the slaughtering continues on day 11 of Dhul Hijjah and day, day 12 of Dhul Hijjah, 
what's the best time or what's the time to slaughter on those days? Is it the same as day one? They say no. They say no. They say if on, on the second and third day of slaughtering, you can slaughter at any time. What about the night? The night we'll discuss it just now. Tonight we'll discuss it just now because there's a separate rule. There's a separate rule, but in terms of day, that means from Fajr onwards, you can slaughter, you can slaughter, you can slaughter. So those rules of after estimation, after sunrise, etc., that applies to day one only. It applies to day one only. Then they speak on the best time of slaughtering. The best time to slaughter, they say, is after the Eid Salah, after the Eid Khutbah, and after the slaughtering of the Imam, if the Imam is slaughtering. So which Imam? Allahu Alam, this is going to be the Imam of the Salah, the Imam of the Salah. But now, the madhab that touches on these details the best or the most is the Maliki madhab because of the stipulation that the slaughtering be after the slaughtering of the Imam. Now, many of the fuqaha say that a person can get clarity on his madhab or on the rules of one madhab that he's reading based on how other fuqaha explain that same mas'ala in their books. So like Ibn Qudama, a lot of his taqreer or a lot of his conclusions of the Hanbali madhab and his details of the Hanbali madhab, he's used some explanations from some of the Shafi'i scholars, from some of the Shafi'i scholars. So, because that is all the ulama agree on, because many times you read a mas'ala in one madhab and the mas'ala may not be clear, the mas'ala may not be clear, but you go to another madhab and they unpack this mas'ala in so many details, your madhab then becomes clear. So that's something very important to benefit from all the other schools, because sometimes one madhab will touch on a mas'ala but very few details. And another madhab goes in so many details and so many, they unpack smaller mas'ala connected to it and you basically cover, you basically cover the loose the loose uh, holes of your madhab or the madhab you were reading. So the same thing here with the Maliki madhab, how they discuss this aspect of the Imam of the Salah. So here we said that the best time is after the Salah and after the Eid Khutbah and the slaughtering of the Imam, if the Imam is slaughtering and the Imam of Salah, and the, if the Imam is the Imam of Salah. So now before we go to the Maliki madhab, obviously we spoke on the permissible times earlier. When does the slaughtering start? This now is the times when it's the best time to slaughter. So therefore for the best time you wait for your khutbah, you wait for your khutbah. And then for the slaughtering of your imam of the salah, of your imam of the salah. So the Maliki Madhab, they say the imam can be one of two people, one of two people, either, either the imam of the Muslims, either the wali al-amr, the leader of the Muslims, or his representative, or his representative, right? So they go as one category the Imam or his representative in that town. Or number two, the Imam of Salah. Or number two, the Imam of Salah. So now, they speak about a place, a place where both Imams are present, the Imam of the Muslims and the Imam of Salah, then this of difference of opinion will come in. The difference of opinion will come in. But the difference of opinion will come in. They, when? They say if at the, at the Salah, the Imam of the Muslims is the Imam of the Salah, then there's no difference of opinion that who's slaughtering you wait for. For them, it's a stipulation. For them, it's a stipulation. Your udhiyah will not be valid if you slaughtered before the imam. If you slaughtered before the imam, your udhiyah will not be valid. The others say it's recommended or it, it, this would be the best time if you waited for the imam to slaughter. For them, it would not be valid. They say, if, if you began your slaughtering before the imam, but he finished before you finished, it won't be valid. It won't be valid to that extent. They say if you start at the same time of the Imam, it won't be valid. They say if you started after the Imam, but finished before the Imam, they say it won't be valid. They, they make an analogy to it's as if you perform Salah and then you made Salam before your Imam in Salah. Your Salah will not be valid. Your salah will not be valid. There's details of that in fiqh, but as a, in summary, yes, it won't be valid. So they say the same thing here. So you have to start after the Imam and then end after the Imam or with the Imam, not before the Imam, not before the Imam. So that's why it's a very important mas'ala for Maliki followers of the Maliki Madhab and an intricate mas'ala for them as they wait for the Imam to finish the Salah to basically start their slaughtering. So we said if the Imam of the Muslims is going to lead the Salah, if he's going to lead the Salah, then no doubt in the Madhab there's no difference for opinion that you wait for this, for the Imam of the Muslimin to wait for, to, for him to slaughter his animal. Or if he is not the Imam of the Salah, him or his representative, right? Because we're speaking of when both of them are in a, in a town. Both of them are in the town. Then, if the Imam has brought out his animal with him when he comes to the Eid Salah, why? Because in the past, what they used to do, and Rasulullah himself, when they used to 
come for the Eid al-Adha. When they used to come for the Eid al-Adha, they used to bring the animals with them to the Musalla. And then out a bit away from the Musalla, the animals would be there and they'd perform the Salah, then they'd go and slaughter the animals. And they'd go and slaughter the animals. So if the Imam did that, if the Imam did that, the Imam of the Muslims, then you wait for his slaughtering. If neither of the two happened, the Imam is not the Imam of the Muslims is not the Imam of the Salah, and neither did he bring out his animal with him to the Musalla. Then here there's a difference of opinion in the Maliki Madhab. Do you now wait for the slaughtering of the Imam of Salah or the Imam of the Muslims? With a number of the Maliki scholars saying that the stronger opinion in the Madhab is the Imam of Salah. Is the Imam of Salah in this case? A number of them point this out. Asawi, Barush, etc. Many of them point out that the strong opinion is that you wait for the Imam of the Salah. And he's slaughtering. And they say if there's if you the Imam you are praying with, and if you are outside of the city, if you're outside of the city, you wait for the slaughtering of the closest Imam to you. You wait for the slaughtering of the closest Imam who performs salah closest to you, you wait for his slaughtering. So, like that, they have the details in, in the Maliki Madhab. When it would be the Imam of the Muslims and when it would be the Imam of the Salah. Then they you wait for his slaughtering, you wait for his slaughtering to be done, and then and then you can. You can slaughter your animal. On the other madhahib, they say that yes, it's better to wait for the imam slaughtering, the imam of salah, or as we said, the way the Maliki madhahib, they open, unpacked it in so much details that the other schools do not, when specifying which is the imam. So then the ulama mention who touch on this masala, they say if the imam of the Muslims or the imam of salah brought his animal out like how they used to do in the past in the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they used to bring it out. So then you can slaughter immediately and then everyone is present from the Salah, then you can distribute your meat and people can get a portion of the meat and everyone can share in the joy of Eid and in slaughtering. So if that happened, then they say it's recommended now, it's more recommended that you wait for the Imam to slaughter first. He's your Imam in Salah, so he should be your Imam in slaughtering. And if he did not, like in most cases today, in most of the world, the Imam does not. The Imam does not bring his animal out. People do not slaughter near the Musalla as they used to in the past. In that case, they say that in this case, to wait for the istihbab of the Imam slaughtering, to fulfill this istihbab and waiting for the Imam, to get this mustahab act of waiting for the Imam, it would be difficult. And therefore, the, a person should wait for the salah to be done and the khutbah to be done. The salah to be done and the khutbah to be done. Okay, the last few masail. The last few masail, they speak on the rule of slaughtering the animals at night. So this would be makruh according to the Hanbali, Hanafi and Shafi'i. Madhab, the Maliki Madhab says it's not permissible to slaughter at night. It's not permissible to slaughter at night. So the Hanbali Madhab or the majority of the ulama, what's the evidence is? Number one, they say Allah says, Allah, uh, Allah says, uh, fi ayyamin ma'lumat. So the word ayyam is used. Ayyam means day. Ayyam can be translated as day. So this falls into mafhum we've touched on in the past. And this is a mafhum which means the, op the, the text, the opposite meaning of the text, the rule applies to it. In the sense that Allah says you mention the name of Allah and slaughtering on the ayyam, on the yawm, on the day aspect. So that means the opposite of day is night. So if you're going to mention the name of Allah and slaughter in the day, the opposite of that means that should this not happen in the day, it would not count. It would not count. So they mention that this is the one evidence. But other ulama say that ayyam in Arabic can be used for day and night. And in fact, it is used for day and night. It's used for day and night. So they do not agree with that. And number one, the evidence of using a mafhum is also one that is uh, sometimes questioned by many fuqaha, especially the Hanafi madhab. And certain types of mafhum, there's maybe 11, 12 types, maybe even more. Certain of them are quite weak. So this is one of the weak ones. This is one of the weak ones. So that's number one. Number two, there's a hadith. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam prohibited slaughtering at night. But this hadith is a mursal hadith from the tabi'i Aqa. So that's number two. And number three, they say because of the strong difference of opinion. The Hamadi Madhab says in the Madhab from Khiraqi, Abu Al-Qasim Al-Khiraqi and outside the Madhab. So the Maliki Madhab. So they say based on that, they say it's better not to slaughter at night. And as we said, when there's a difference of opinion, if a person can do something to get out of it, he should. And this is from the principles of the Fuqaha. When there's a strong difference of opinion, when there's a strong difference of opinion, then you take that into consideration. And if it's, if the faqih deem, deem something permissible, as in mubah, but other fuqaha, based on strong evidences, deem it wajib or fard, then those fuqaha who deem it mubah would say it's mustahab to get out of the difference of opinion. They don't believe it is full on wajib. But they also say that since these other ulama have some uh, strong evidences and they themselves deem it wajib, we're not going to leave it solely at mubah. We're going to say it's recommended to try and encourage people to do it so they don't leave it off. 
In the same way, if something is haram, but they deem it mubah, not haram, then they might say makruh, out of the difference of opinion. But it must be a strong difference of opinion. It must be a strong difference of opinion. In fact, some of the Hanbali fuqaha, I think in Al-Muntaha, it doesn't even say it's makruh to slaughter at night. So basically, it will be permissible to slaughter at night. Other fuqaha, like the Shafi'i scholars mentioned that um, if you're slaughtering at night, it might be dark. So therefore, you might not slaughter the correct, you might not slaughter the animal as best as you might do so if, there was, if there were, it was bright in the day. Slaughtering the correct parts and fulfilling the sunan of slaughtering and not doing the other, not uh, causing harm to the, uh, pain to the animal, etc. But then that you could argue if there was light or lights like in today, there's not darkness. And others say that at night, people usually don't come out. The poor don't come out to, so to collect the meat. So you won't be able to distribute it as soon as possible as you would in the day. So that's some of the reasons. Um, so if a person can manage not to slaughter at night, then he should do so. Then he should do so. So the Maliki Madhab say that you can slaughter from sunrise, from sunrise. But they say it's better to wait from until the time when salah becomes permissible again. So those 10, 12, 15 minutes after sunrise, if you wait for, uh, until then, then you start slaughtering on your remaining two days of Eid, then they say that would be better. That would be better. The other schools say it's permissible at all times, night and day, but preferably not the night. Preferably not the night. And if done so at night, it will be valid. Then if you missed the days of Udhiyah, if you missed the days of Udhiyah, the time has passed, now what do you do here? They say that the Udhiyah that is wajibah, you do qadha of that. And the Udhiyah that is not wajibah, you don't do qadha of that. So the Udhiyah that is wajibah is the Udhiyah that you've taken a vow. That's the only way, according to the majority of the ulama, that Udhiyah can become wajibah. In the Hanafi Madhab, the moment you bought the animal it, uh, with the intention of Udhiyah, the moment you bought it with the intention of Udhiyah and you own the Nisab and you own the Nisab on those days of Eid, any day of the day of Eid and you bought the animal with the intention of Udhiyah then it becomes wajibah. So the Hanafi Madhab will have different rules, I'll explain them now. So for the rest of the ulama, if you have a, if you have a vow, if you have a vow and the time of Eid, Eid al-Adha is gone, then you still slaughter the animal and that animal would count as the vow and then you distribute the meat or it would be recommended to distribute even that meat the way we're going to mention as the Sunnah to distribute uh, normal udhiyah meat stored at the correct time, okay? And for a, sun, a sunnah udhiyah, then once the time is gone, your chance to perform the sunnah is gone. As we usually, as we said before, sunnah fata mahalluha. The sunnah, the chance for doing it is gone, so there's now no qawa for it. If you were to slaughter it, then it's normal meat that you slaughter. So you can eat the entire portion, the entire animal. You don't have to give charity with a portion of it as in wajib to do so. And the other rules don't apply, or the other sunnah do not apply to it. And in the Hanafi Madhab, in the Hanafi Madhab, you bought an animal with the intention of Udhi and you own the Nisab, then in that case, you have to slaughter this animal. If you did not slaughter the animal, or let's say you slaughtered the animal before the days of Udhiyah, you slaughtered it already. You have to buy another animal to slaughter on the day of Udhiyah. You have to. If you did not, then you have to give the worth of an Udhiyah animal, the market value, from the time you own the Nisab. You have to give it, or if you already own the Nisab, the times it becomes wajib, that means on the 10th of Dhul Hijjah, you have to give that in charity. You have to give that in charity. And if you've not slaughtered your animal, if you've not slaughtered your animal on the days of Eid and the time is gone, then you have to give that animal alive in charity. You have to give that animal alive in charity. And uh, so therefore, you, give, you didn't slaughter the animal goes. If, if you didn't have an animal, you didn't have an animal in the first place and it was wajib on you to slaughter, then you have to give the market value of an animal of Eid out in charity. The market value out, you have to give it in charity. And that's what you do when, if you did not slaughter your animal of Eid and it was wajib on you in the Hanafi Madhab, in the Hanafi Madhab. The first situation when you slaughtered the animal, if you, you had to buy another one. If you bought another one, did not slaughter it, it has to go alive in charity. If you did not buy another one, you have to give the worth of an animal in charity uh, on after the day of Eid because you did not slaughter on the day of Eid. And you did not buy it on the day of Eid. But it then has to be slaughtered. So that's what you do with regards to uh, if the time of, if the time of the days of slaughtering has passed. So the next mas'ala the fuqaha speak about, they say what happens if people stood on Arafah on day 8 by mistake? Arafah is on day 9 of the hijjah but these people stood on day 8 by mistake and therefore they slaughtered on day 9 thinking it is day 10. They slaughtered on what was actually day of Arafah thinking it was the day of Eid. What would the rule be there? And the rule of this mas'ala breaks up from the other mas'ala and that is if people, if people stood on Eid on, uh, if people stood on Arafah on the wrong day, would the Arafah count? 
So the fuqaha say, if the entire hujjaj student Arafah on the wrong day, then the Arafah would count. The Arafah would count. As long as it's everyone. As long as it's everyone, they stood the day before, this day after, by mistake, with the days counting the calendar, whatever it may be. Whatever occurred, all of them made a mistake. They stood on the wrong, the wrong day. So now what happened in the first situation, they stood on day eight, they slaughtered before the days of, of Udhiyya, the Fuqaha say, the Hanbali Fuqaha, uh, based on the Mas'al of Hajj, but the Hanafi Fuqaha specifically here, they say, they say it, the slaughtering would be valid. And the Shafi'i Fuqaha say, there's two opinions in the Madhab, the weaker one saying it, that this slaughtering would be valid. They say based on the fact that the Arafah would be valid. But the strong opinion in the Madhab, the, some of the Fuqaha point out, is that that Arafah would not count and therefore the Udhiyah would not count. But the majority of the ulama say that the Udhiyah would count in this situation. Another situation, they stood on Arafah on the 10th. They stood on Arafah by mistake on the 10th. So now what happens here? What happens here is that day 11, and day 11 is still the day of slaughtering. So your Udhiyah, you slaughtered on the day after the 10th, so it would still count for sure, it would count for sure. But then do you count day 11 as being day one of slaughtering? Because Arafah was the day before, which was actually the day of Eid. So do you count day of Arafah, which is they thought was Arafah, which is actually the day of Eid? Do you count two days after that? Or do you count two days after what they thought was the day of Eid? So here the Fuqaha will touch on this Mas'ala. Uh, I think the, 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 the Shafi'i Fuqaha will touch on this Mas'ala. They say that you count the days of Tashriq, the days of slaughtering, as they are, as they are. So you found out that it's day 11. So that is your second day of slaughtering. So there's one more day. You don't say, okay, yesterday we thought it was Arafah. So therefore today we thought it's Eid. So therefore there's two days after you don't do that. You don't do that. The third situation, as we said in the Hanafi Madhab, if they prayed and slaughtered and then it turned out to be Arafah, they say it, it would count. They say the slaughtering would count. They say the slaughtering would count. This is one of the last few Masail, if they realized after Zawal that it's Eid, if they realized after Zawal that it's Eid, then what would they do here? Because the time for the Eid Salah we mentioned, other than Sheikh Muhammad Al-Khalwati from the Hanabila, who says you can pray Eid Salah on the whole day, in Jama'ah, this the entire people missed the Eid Salah. They thought it was the day of Arafah, and then they realized after Zawal that it's the day of Eid. Now you can slaughter immediately. Zawal has come, you can slaughter immediately, and the Eid Salah gets performed tomorrow. The Eid Salah gets performed tomorrow. And if they realized, if they realized that it's Eid during the morning of the day of Eid, so they didn't know beforehand, they didn't know beforehand, they realized during the morning it's Eid, then here in this case, the Imam, the people should go out and perform Salah to Eid first. It would be the normal rules. Therefore, you cannot slaughter until Zawal. You cannot slaughter until Zawal. Meaning, not that you can't slaughter until Zawal, meaning that if the Imam did not come out and perform Salah until Zawal, now you can slaughter. Now you can slaughter. If the Imam came out and performed the Salah, then you can slaughter after that. If the Imam, you cannot slaughter before the Salah or before Zawal if there was no Salah. You cannot slaughter before the Salah if there's going to be Salah. And if there's no Salah, you cannot slaughter before Zawal. Okay, that's how it would be the last Mas'ala. The second last Mas'ala. Very interesting one. The Hanafi Fuqaha say, the Hanafi Fuqaha touch on this Mas'ala. They say if the Eid Salah was performed, and then we said the Eid slaughtering counts after the Eid Salah. So what happens if people perform the Eid Salah and then they slaughtered the animals, or most of them, most of the animals, then the person, the Imam came out after saying that I performed the Eid Salah without wudu, which means the Eid Salah is invalid. So now what would happen to the slaughtering here? What would happen to the slaughtering here? Interestingly, the Hanafi Fuqaha say that the slaughtering will be valid. The slaughtering will be valid. And what's the reason? As you already mentioned last time, that we spoke about a mufti. What does he do before an action and how he looks at the situation after an action? After a person has found himself in difficulty, a mufti could look at another madhab or send the person to an alim of another madhab, knowing that that madhab or knowing that alim of the madhab might have an easier opinion that would suit, that would fit the situation of this person. We spoke of that. Now here they say, that the fact that some ulama, mainly like the Shafi'i Madhab, or other ulama as well, but like for example the Shafi'i Madhab, they say that only the Imam Salah would be invalid. So the Hanafi Fuqaha say that this Udhiyah of the people would be valid based on the fact they say some ulama say that the Imam has to perform, only the Imam Salah is invalid. So they give the Udhiyah being valid 
based on the fact of the difference of opinion and they've given fatwa on another madhab to make it easier to validate the slaughtering of everyone. Otherwise, to say everyone has to re-slaughter, that would be very difficult on people. So they say the fact that some ulama say only, only the imam's salah is invalid. They say based on that, all of those people, everyone else, their salah is valid, so they've slaughtered after salah. They slaughtered after the salah. Lastly, the question comes, sometimes people slaughter overseas. Sometimes people slaughter overseas. And now because they're slaughtering in another country, the date of the Eid may differ with the person who bought the animal in another country. So this person in his country, the one who bought the animal, he might be having the ninth of Dhul Hijjah, the day of Arafah, or the ninth of Dhul Hijjah for him. But in the country where he's slaughtering, it's the tenth of Dhul Hijjah. It's the tenth of Dhul Hijjah. So those people can slaughter, but for him it's not Eid yet. And this animal that's going to be slaughtered is on behalf of him. And for him it's not Eid yet. So what do you do here? Do you have to wait? Those people have to wait until it's Eid on behalf of the person who owns the animal? Or can they slaughter based on the fact the animal is in a country where it's Eid? So here the ulama say, and the Hanafi Puqaha touch on this. Specifically, I found them touch on it. Touching on it. They say what counts is the place of the animal. What counts is the place of the animal. So it doesn't matter that for you it's the 8th of Dhul Hijjah, or for you it's the 6th of Dhul Hijjah, or for you it's the 9th. If the animal is in a place where it's the 10th of Dhul Hijjah, that's what counts. So a slaughtering then, if the animal is slaughtered on those days, it would be valid. Irrespective whether it's Eid or not for you, irrespective whether they still haven't slaughtered your animal and it's, the, on the, and it's already the 12th of Dhul Hijjah, but for you it's the 13th, and the animal was slaughtered on the 12th, it would be valid, even though for you already the days of Eid have passed. Already the days of Eid slaughtering have passed. Though some of the senior Hanafi ulama, especially the Indian ulama, they say out of precaution, try and get the slaughtering of the animal and the person to be on the same day. So if it's possible to tell the people overseas, wait one more day to slaughter, so it can be Eid for me as well, they say this would be better out of precaution, out of precaution. And as we said always, if there's a possibility to get out of the difference of opinion, you do so. So here they say out of precaution, that if not possible or if not done, would we say the Udhi is invalid? No, we say the Udhi is valid. But that's what you do in this case when the person who bought the animal, his day of Eid or days of slaughtering are different to the days where the Eid is or the days of slaughtering are in a country where the animal is. And with that we've covered the Masail, most of them connected to this chapter. We ask Allah Azza wa Jal to grant us sincerity in our sayings and our actions. And we ask Allah Azza wa Jal to bless us with a good death when it's the time for our death. Wa sallallahu sallam wa baraka ala nabiyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahabihi ajma'in. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.